Microsoft supports these things called para virtual drivers, right? Greater throughput and lower CPU. It's available to you. If you choose not to use it, you're not going to get the benefits. It's one of those things that's out there. So use it. I like that. That's good math. Up to 30% CPU savings, up to 12% I/O improvement. Good math to me, right? But you got to know what it can and can't do, right? So we know that it's good in the SAN environment. It's not so good for direct attack storage, right? Every tool has its good uses, but it's available. It's going to make things run faster in a business critical app situation. Take full advantage of it. Hyperthread. Hyperthread is where a processor appears as two. Right, we've been talking about virtual CPUs and a business critical environment. It's really important to understand how many virtual CPUs you have. Because one of the things we're going to talk about is you don't want to overcommit. Right? Even though in a development test environment you get a lot of uplift from overcommitting, in a production environment, if you start to overcommit, you're always at risk of not having enough resources for that production database. Right? And it's going to cause a slowdown. So you've got to be able to count the right virtual CPUs, and God knows everybody tries to make this hard. So they say, we have hyperthreading. Well, what does hyperthreading really mean? Well, I know in a physical box, if I have eight cores, I have eight vCPUs. All right, I get that math. Well, in a hyperthreaded situation, I got more than four, but less than eight. And so what I've learned is about 120% uplift. It's not two. It's really about 1.2. And if you use that as a guideline, you won't misrepresent what you have for virtual CPUs. So four cores hyperthreaded equals five virtual CPUs. That's easy math. All right? I then I drive the point home because if you can't figure out how many virtual CPUs you are, you're going to do it wrong. And so I just use the next example. Two quad cores equals eight virtual CPUs. Easy math. Um, so I would argue avoid overcommitment. We all say to be conservative in business critical app situation, i.e. Oracle, right? One to one ratio is a safe bet coming out of the gate. And the warning signs there again, hyperthreaded CPU is not a full you know, CPU. NUMA, there's this thing called NUMA, which is good because it speeds up processing. Uh, but there's some interesting things that go on with NUMA. So NUMA avoids a performance hit when several processes attempt to address the same area. So let me go to the example. If you know how many NUMA nodes you have, and I'm going to use a really simple example, four NUMA nodes, and my system has 32 gig, then each processor is going to get allocated about 8 gig to that particular NUMA node. If your VM can fit in under 8 gig, it avoids ever having to go to another NUMA node to do its work. It gives you optimal performance. This is like fine tuning. It's not the end of the world that you have to jump across, but it will give you optimal performance if you can tune it into that equation. Then I think about VMware, it knows it's numer aware, so great. It'll take full advantage, and so I use the analogy of letting VMware do the driving. Sit back. Right? The hardware vendors are changing the stuff to be really virtualized savvy. VMware's smart enough to pick up and fully utilize this stuff. It just makes your life easier. A point on that is sometimes when you look at best practices, they're saying don't use NUMA because they're talking about what an operating system can handle. Where it's actually a VM kernel that's doing this work from a virtualization perspective, we've got completely different algorithms that have been optimized for this. So um, it's really important you understand why is Oracle saying not to do this, but VMware is saying to do it. We're looking at it from two completely different contexts. We're looking at it in terms of what the hypervisor and the VM kernel can do. 